In section 3.1, we learned the definition of a derivative, um, namely that it's the slope of a tangent line anywhere for any x value, and that's also equal to f prime of x, which is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. This is called the limit of the difference quotient, and it's the definition of a derivative. All right, however, even though it's the definition, it is very, very cumbersome. We don't want to use this all the time, especially as our functions are going to get more complicated. We were struggling to use this de limit definition for, quite frankly, rather simple functions, and if things get more complicated than that, we're going to be in trouble. So we need some shortcut rules, and so that's what section 3, 3 is, and actually several of the next sections. It's just learning some rules for derivatives that we will have to memorize because we have to have these kind of internally in our head, but we will be given um, the derivatives reference sheet on our exam. So we don't have to memorize for them for the exam, but we will have to memorize them for our pop quizzes because we need to have them just kind of known in our head. All right, so the first of these rules, sorry, is rather obvious. It's the constant rule. So, namely, if you have a horizontal line, right, which is what a constant function looks like, then the derivative will always be zero. And it doesn't matter where I put that constant line, I can put it up, down, right, wherever, it's going to be zero for the slope, right? You'll notice that that green line never changed, and that's the derivative graph, according to Desmos. Desmos knows its stuff, right? So, wherever I put this, the derivative is zero, all right? Well, a constant line is kind of a special case, actually, of a different function. So that's the constant rule. And it's the first rule on your derivative sheet. If I just pull that up real quick, you can see it's right here. It's rule number one. The derivative of a constant, d over dx, take the derivative of a constant, and you get zero. Okay. So I'll just make a note. This is rule number one on your sheet. All right. And again, you have to memorize them for quizzes, but you don't have to memorize them for the exam. We're giving you quizzes like that because we want you to be able to, to really internalize the stuff. Um, these rules, these basic rules, the first 18 on that sheet, um, these basic rules are to calculus what your times tables are to algebra. You just have to know them. You just have to. Um, the exception to that is the bottom six, which are useful, but I, I just never make people memorize the arc ones, the inverse trig function ones. All right, so now let's learn the slope of any linear function. Okay, so a linear function would be, let me just write it out, it'd be y equals mx plus b. That would be your function, f of x. Okay, so if that's your f of x, what is the derivative going to be? Well, the derivative is the slope, correct? The slope of the function. So that means that the derivative f prime of x would be equal to m, whatever m may be, right? So that one's not really a rule on the sheet. It's just kind of obvious, um, but it will help us derive this rule down here. But namely, the, the derivative of any line, diagonal line and horizontal line, is equal to the slope. Actually, this one up here is a special case of this, because a horizontal line has a slope of 0, and, right? Because a horizontal line is basically y equals b, or y equals c, right? So that's a horizontal line, so slope is 0, and then this would be working, this would work for diagonal lines as well. So let me make a note. Um, this is true for any diagonal line and also any horizontal line. Right? Because a horizontal line is actually the one that's up above in the constant rule. Because the horizontal line is actually that one, right? But it's also this one. This is kind of the, the larger case and this is like a special case of this. But it's not true for vertical lines because Vertical lines are not functions. Okay. All right. So now let's help 
or this has helped us figure out a pattern for derivatives that we want to talk about. So the first thing we can see is that if f of x was equal to x, so let me go show that to you on Desmos, what would happen? So if I make f of x equal to x, there it is, right? It's a line. And do you see what this is? It's 1. Interesting. All right, so that would be the first one. f of x is equal to x, then f prime of x is equal to 1. All right, now what about if f of x was equal to x squared? So let me go here and put a little squared on this. All right, well, it's no longer 1. It's no longer a horizontal, but check it out. It's a line with slope equal to 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. So it's a line with um, slope equal to 2 as it goes through the origin, so it's 2x. Hmm. So this would be f prime of x is equal to 2x. And you can see you're starting to develop a pattern here. The way to get this is to take the 1, bring it down in front, right? It becomes 1 x to the 1 take away 1. 1 take away 1 is 0. So it becomes 1 x to the 0, which is 1. This is 2, bring the 2 down in front, and then x to the 2 take away 1, 2 take away 1 is 1. There's a power of 1 right there. All right, so if my supposition is correct, which it is, then this one should be 3x squared. You should be able to bring the 3 down and see it. So let me show you. So if I let this be x cubed right here, then that's definitely a parabola. But let me just throw in a graph real quick so you can see that I'm right. 3x squared. Yep, that's the one. See it? It's 3x squared. That's that derivative. Because I have the derivative graphing in green. This is the derivative graph right here. So, um, and I do that just by telling it to graph f prime. So the labels is not a big thing to pay attention to. All right, so that derivative graph is 3x squared, and what I was saying was going to work is working. So that means that this f prime of x is 3x squared. All right, well, keeping up that pattern, right, bring the power down. f prime of x here would be 4 x to the 4 take away 1, which is 3. This leads us to a general rule called the power rule. Very nice rule. Um, we will use it all the time. It's one of the most ubiquitous u rules that we use. Namely, if you have a x to a power, you bring the power down, then make it x to the n take away 1. That's the power rule for derivatives. right here. All right, so that leads us to the top of the next page. And the power rule for derivatives is also on your sheet, that you can take x to the n, and then the way you take the derivative is n times x to the n minus 1. And it's on your sheet. It's right here. So here was that one rule in there, the x part derivative of x is 1. Um, and then this is the power rule. Now, we're using a, a u function in there. We'll talk more about that a little bit later in section 3.7. But suffice it to say that u is kind of an f of x on its own. So if you have f of x to a power, you bring the power down, n, then x to the n take away 1. And you can ignore the u prime for right now, but that'll matter a lot to you once we hit section 3.7. And then the next one we have is actually this part, c f prime of x, right? If you have a constant, you can just multiply the constant times the derivative. You don't have to take the derivative of the constant. And that's actually this rule right here. This is rule number three, and the power rule is rule number four. So if I write that, this is rule number three on the sheet. This is rule number four. And again, you can kind of ignore the u's for right now. For us, for currently, um, our u will always be x, therefore our u prime is always 1. But eventually, in section 3, 7 and beyond, the u's will become very important to us, and the v's.